Before we dive deep into other people's business, please keep in mind that we love to bring our videos to life by adding karaoke sessions, ad libs, speaking in tongues, and voice impersonations. If this type of content isn't to your liking, go ahead and see yourself out. <laughs> Bestie ain't playing with y'all today. <laughs> Uh oh, she is not playing with y'all today, okay? And on that note, welcome to another episode of our Mega Church Messiness series. In our last episode, we explored the life of Bishop Lamar Whitehead. And honestly, we didn't think we'd ever find a man of God who was messier than him. But after reading through the comments section of our videos, we kept seeing the same request over and over and over again. Those requests were for us to do a video about Prophet Timetope Belogon Joshua. Who? Better known as TB Joshua. Who? <laughs> now let's find out why Forbes magazine once described TB as Nigeria's most controversial clergyman. On his church's official website, they proclaimed that sometime around 1862, it was prophesied that a poor young man would emerge one day and God would use him mightily. 1862, huh? Okay. A century later, TB was snuggled up in his mom's womb. According to TB, his mom was pregnant with him for 15 months. Child, the story just started, and he already with the shits. Lying his ass off for no reason. 15 months. Child. He was born on June 12, 1963 in Ondo, Nigeria. A damn Gemini, sis. I knew it. These Geminis couldn't up. Three days after he was born, TB claims a large stone crashed through the roof of his family's home. The stone missed him by inches because, according to TB, a mysterious force moved him to safety. So because he was in the womb for 15 months and narrowly escaped death thanks to a mysterious entity, the people of his village started to believe he would grow up to be the young man that had been prophesied for so many years. As a young child, he became the leader of the Student Christian Fellowship. His dad passed away, and his Muslim uncle stepped in as a father figure. One day, TB fell into a trance for three consecutive days. He said he saw a hand that pointed a Bible to his heart, and the Bible immediately entered his heart. Then he saw the apostles and prophets and a figure that he believed to be Jesus Christ. He heard the figure say, I am your God. I am giving you divine commission to go and carry out the work of the Heavenly Father. Preacher sure do be hearing a lot of voices, child. I don't, I don't, I don't know. The voice went on to say they would reveal themselves to TB through teaching, preaching, miracles, and signs. TB stated that he received supernatural powers ever since that moment of anointing. He told Modern Ghana website that he eventually moved to Lagos to be with his older sister. He worked in a poultry farm cleaning up chicken boo-boo. Oh, if you're from the country, you know chicken sh stank. Who is stank on a different level of stank? Sometime in the mid to late 80s, he founded Synagogue Church of All Nations. The church is based in a community in Lagos State's relatively poor northwest region. TB's fame transformed the area into a thriving commercial hub. Markets, banks, hotels, and restaurants emerged to meet the demand from visitors, including the 15,000 people who would attend his services every week. The government reported that the number of worshipers traveling to the church has significantly boosted tourism to Nigeria. His preaching was a mixture of conventional Pentecostal themes, and he also sprinkled in some of the prosperity gospel, prophecies, healing, and exorcisms. Exorcisms? Fix it, Jesus. The church also included a maze-like concrete compound that contained a dormitory where at least 150 disciples lived. Some of them had been living there for decades alongside TB. They called him Daddy. Daddy? and would reportedly kneel at his feet when greeting him in his office. They left behind their jobs, families, friends, and careers to spend long hours memorizing hundreds of pages of TB's teachings. In 1989, a woman named Evelyn heard about TB and his prophecies, so she and her sister went to his home to pay him a visit. Unfortunately, he wasn't there. Months later, she returned to his home. This time, she went alone and was taken into TB's consulting room. Evelyn said TB gazed at her for about a minute and then wrote a phrase on a piece of paper that translated to, the twin has come. Evelyn was blown away because she had a twin brother and she knew there was no way TB could have known that information. 
From there, he took another piece of paper and wrote her name on it. Evelyn was shocked because she hadn't even introduced herself. So she was convinced that TB was the real deal. Or the first time she went to his house, he had one of his little disciples gather up some information about her. So the second time she spun the block and came back around, he could pretend to be a prophet. <laughs> Stephen and scheming, honey. TB and Evelyn started chatting about his family. And then she opened up about her past, present, and her goals for the future. After their 45-minute conversation, he looked at her and said, Please don't be annoyed. Don't think this is how I talk to everyone that comes to me. I don't have a concubine, and I don't want to have a concubine. But can you marry me? Now say what now? TB, you sound weird as hell. Evelyn said in an interview that she thought it was strange, but she went ahead and accepted his proposal. It was strange. Bitch, you didn't even get dinner and a date. You don't even know how big his package is. 45 minutes. So what was it about TB that made her agree to marry him after a 45-minute conversation? Well, she said he was honest, humble, God-fearing, and kind-hearted. And she loved how his goal was to please God at all times. They got married in 1990 and welcomed three daughters. TB reportedly adopted another girl sometime later. Evelyn soon realized that there were countless women who were ready and willing to throw their panties at the prophet's pulpit. An interviewer asked Evelyn how she helped TB overcome temptations. Evelyn said, I can say that God has been merciful enough guiding and protecting us in that angle. He started airing his ministry 24-7 on a program called Emmanuel TV. As the internet became more accessible, he used technology to spread the gospel by launching a YouTube channel, Twitter, and Facebook accounts. He wrote books, recorded DVDs, and released audio recordings on his website. He also sold anointing water for about seven U.S. dollars. What the hell is anointing water? According to a statement on his website, TB stated that the water is used to symbolically set yourself apart for Jesus Christ's special attention as you pray in faith. He eventually opened branches of his church in London, Athens, and Ghana. From all of his ventures, TB grew his empire to an estimated 15 million U.S. dollars. Yeah, we think the people that make bottled water is balling. Look like anointing water make money too, honey. Despite his popularity, he was regularly criticized by the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria after being accused of performing fake miracles and healings. He was also an outcast to the Christian Association of Nigeria. None of that could stop people from far and wide from attending his services, especially those who had hope that through TB, God would heal them or bless them with wealth. And this here lies the problem with the prosperity gospel. Believers are known for ignoring the natural order of life, which includes aging and sickness. Instead, they are told that those who are poor or in bad health can reverse those conditions. And if they fail to do so, it is blamed on their lack of faith. Unsurprisingly, the prosperity gospel is popular among those who are facing significant economic and health challenges. People are more vulnerable and desperate for God's blessings when they fall into troubling times. Unlike other pastors in our Mega Church Messiness series, TB didn't promise his followers that they would be rewarded if they donated large sums to his church. In fact, during a sermon, he made it clear that he didn't even like receiving money from people. The most dangerous thing I re- I'm afraid of is money. Because the money you are giving me, I don't know where it's coming from. Whether it's a blood money, I don't know. Whether you're a criminal, I don't know. He was also known for giving out large amounts of cash and food to those in need. Girl, speaking of food, you forgot to promote our little snaggity snacks. Girl, you right. I get so caught up in this messiness, I be forgetting. It's okay, girl. Can I sing a little song before you jump into it? I guess, but make it quick. I gotta get back to the story. Thanks, Spooky. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Oh, Lord, how excellent. How excellent. How excellent. How excellent. Oh, 
the choir this time, girl. I hope you don't mind. Our online concession stand at rrgsnacks.com has an assortment of five-star goodies for you to enjoy while watching our videos, like barbecue bacon jerky, green apple licorice, and gummy sour peach rings. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get back to TB Joshua and this hot, stankin' mess. You're probably wondering how he funded his ministry if he wasn't asking his members for money. Well, according to a sermon obtained by Daily Post website, a member of TB's team stated that offerings were still funding the church. The member added that those offerings came from the heart unprompted. They also clarified that people could only give if God calls them to do so. I'm Angel Gomez. I'm 16 years old. I play for Manchester United in England and I'm going through a career breakthrough at the moment with a lot of injuries and I need Man of God to help me with these injuries, please. Man of God, help me, please. Wealthy and notable celebrities, including athletes and the late Winnie Mandela, visited TB's church to experience his healing methods. His services frequently included blind eyes being opened, the crippled regaining the ability to walk, and people allegedly being healed from HIV and cancer. His website reportedly had testimonials and pictures of people holding before and after pictures of their test results that showed their ailments being eradicated from their bodies after being healed by TB. However, TB would always stress that it wasn't him doing the healing. It was the power of the Holy Spirit operating through him. In case you're wondering, his healing session went a little something like this. I cannot walk. Please help me. My legs, they do not work. Cannot walk anymore. Yeah, you say you cannot walk. I go to... Now you walk. Get up. Now walk. You are healed. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's how it went, girl. Bestie. That's how it went, like that. Okay. <laughs> okay, girl. During one of his televised sermons, he even conducted a resurrection. Child, this acting is worse than a Tyler Perry production. <laughs> testimonies of his healings were videotaped and copies of the video were widely distributed around the world, thus attracting more visitors. Many of his church members also testified that TB appeared to them in their homes or offices after they had worn or hung pieces of paper on which he had scribbled words on it. Hmm, not today, Satan. Hmm, not today. My Charisma website claimed TB asked people to walk around nude during his sermons to prove they had been healed. Girl, I know you lie. His magazine also included nude before and after images. Girl, was it the Playboy magazine? <laughs> TB declared on July 6, 1997, that a famous person would pass away. On August 31, 1997, Princess Diana lost her life in a car accident. TB's church credited him for predicting her passing. However, there's no record of his prediction, and his prophecy was shared as a written statement on the internet many years after Princess Diana passed away. Even in scheming, honey. By the turn of the new millennium, people were sick and tired of TB's mess. Some described him as a fraud, a charlatan, and an occultist. And pastors of Nigeria's largest churches accused him of mixing Christianity with occult practices. However, that didn't stop Christians from all over the globe from supporting him. He hosted daily services that attracted thousands of visitors. But then came 2002, when a Colorado woman accused him of holding her hostage at his religious compound. She told My Charisma website that his staff members held her airline ticket and passport for seven hours despite her protests. She said she was terrified during her visit, and she described his disciples as zombies with vacant looks in their eyes. Zombies? Uh -uh. Well, just call me Michonne from The Walking Dead, because I would have tore up everything in that damn compound to get out. <laughs> Talking about some zombies. They would have met the walking dead that day, okay? They would have been happy to get rid of my black ass. She went on to claim that while at the compound, she was urged to watch testimonial videos that showed people touching themselves. What the hell? She also accused TB of using profanity during his prayers. Girl, what that sound like? <laughs> Dear God, please tell these people to remove their clothing because I need pictures for my magazine. These motherfuckers are stubborn, Lord. Please help me. In the name of Jesus, ah, Emma. The allegations, as well as others, were swept under the rug. During a 2013 service at a branch of his church in Ghana, it was announced that his anointing water would be given out for free. 
The announcement caused a stampede. Four people lost their lives and 30 people were injured. Girl, imagine losing your life over some damn sewage water. What a damn shame. Mm, mm, mm. R.I.P. babies. The following year, the guest house on his compound collapsed into a pile of rubble and more than 100 people lost their lives. According to TB, he saw a small plane circling the building before it collapsed. He suggested that the incident was an attempt to take his life. However, rescue officials stated the cause of the building's collapse was the construction of additional stories without reinforcing the foundations. Officials also claimed members of the church initially prevented emergency workers from participating in the rescue for the first three days. Then came 2016. During a sermon, TB told his congregation he saw a woman winning the 2016 U.S. presidential election. The prophecy was also added to the church's Facebook account. Well, after Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton, the prophecy was deleted. <laughs> And social media users had a field day with the prophet's shenanigans. After being dragged all across the World Wide Web, TB reinstated his prophecy. According to CFR website, he argued that Hillary did win the election because she won the popular vote. Nigerians, most of whom believed that Trump's presidency reflected the will of God, weren't trying to hear anything TB's ass was talking about. Sit your ass down, TB, with your fake ass predictions. <laughs> And then came the coronavirus pandemic. TB was photographed laid up on somebody's mountain. According to the church, he had been at the mountain for four days, praying to God to heal the world. Get your ass off that mountain and sit your ass down somewhere. He prophesied that the virus would end on March 27, 2020. At the start of 2021, TB predicted that it would be a tough year thanks to the pandemic. What he didn't predict was that it would be a tough year for his ministry, too. His YouTube account, which had close to 2 million subscribers, was shut down by the platform for violating its community guidelines. Girl, why? Was he showing his naked zombies on there? <laughs> According to Open Democracy website, the channel posted at least seven clips showing TB engaging in violent exorcism to cure gay and lesbian congregants of their sexual orientation. Sit your ass down, Bishop Eddie Long Jr. <laughs> <laughs> On June 5th, 2021, shortly after recording a live broadcast and just a week before his 58th birthday, TB passed away. Social media users were shocked, especially since he was still relatively young and vibrant. So what the hell happened to God blessing the faithful with good health? And why wasn't Prophet TB able to predict his own passing? Now that's the million dollar question right there. Well, according to the church, his passing wasn't untimely or unforeseen. They stated he was simply called back home, and they didn't disclose any further details. This has led to conspiracy theories and rumors that he either suffered a stroke or took his own life. His wife, Evelyn, was named the head of the church, which many people weren't on board with. A few weeks later, the church's official Facebook page released an interview with TB that was allegedly conducted in the final weeks of his life. During the interview, he appeared to have suggested that Evelyn did not have his blessing as successor. He said, The issue of the family should not come into the issue of the church. He added that the church wasn't a business that needed to be handed down. When asked what he had done to prepare in case he needed to step down, he pointed to five senior disciples to whom he'd recently given the titles of prophet and prophetess. But either way, Evelyn was announced as the new leader under the guidance of God. Evelyn got to work right away and started cleaning house. The BBC reported that videos emerged of disciples who had lived in the compound for years being escorted off of the premises. Those who were removed were said to be in opposition to Evelyn taking over. There were also allegations of fraud, and Nigeria's anti-corruption agency was investigating a case of leading members of TB's inner circle fleeing the compound with bags of cash following his passing. Evelyn launched a new YouTube channel for the ministry, which YouTube eventually took down as well for violating the platform's hate speech policies. <laughs> grand opening, grand closing. The church had other things to worry about, though. 
In January 2024, the BBC announced they had concluded a two-year investigation into TB and his secretive compound. The details of the allegations spanned almost 20 years. The BBC got in contact with dozens of former church members who alleged they were forced into a cult where they were allegedly taken advantage of by TB. Some were forced to get multiple abortions after TB impregnated them, and they detailed accounts of alleged torture carried out by the late prophet. One alleged victim said, we all thought we were in heaven, but we were in hell, and in hell terrible things happen. What in the prisoners of war was going on? Multiple people also came forward and stated TB's miracle healings were all fake. According to the BBC, the church had an exclusive section called the Emergency Department, which was responsible for making TB's miracles look real. Visitors who were sick and wanted to be healed would assemble in that particular section, and the church's team would decide who would be filmed and prayed for by TB. According to those who previously worked for the church, each visitor had to fill out a medical report. They also had to give details about their illness and all the medications they were prescribed. According to insiders, they were told to stop taking their medication. And without their knowledge, TB would have a pharmacist provide the same medication, and the church would slip the medication into the visitors' fruit drinks. They were urged to drink the juice that TB had blessed. The purpose of this was so that visitors would not become unwell during their time at the compound, and they would believe in the divine healing powers of the prophet. Ooh, child, you talking about scamming. Girl, I am rarely speechless, but God. A man who supervised the department for 10 years told the BBC that anyone who had cancer was sent away. And then people who had normal open wounds that could heal were put on camera and presented as having cancer. Trickery 101. The person would hold up a sign detailing their made-up or exaggerated ailments. When it was time to meet TB, they would stand in line before the cameras and be healed. People were reportedly told that by exaggerating their problems, God would exaggerate their healing. And what happened to these sick people when they returned home? Were they actually healed? Hell no. A woman named Tosh Ford visited the church in 2001 in hopes of healing her failing kidney. She was told by the church, Stop taking your medicine and just believe. Four weeks after returning to her home in South Africa, she went into renal failure and was admitted to the hospital. Doctors were able to save her kidney, but it eventually stopped working, and she had to undergo dialysis for more than six years before obtaining a kidney transplant in 2011. When TB traveled to other countries on his healing crusades, he reportedly gravitated toward poor cities in search of people who needed some cash. His team would reportedly tell people, Ah, we need you to just act out this particular scene and we will pay you. As for people who were cured of HIV, cancer, and other diseases, they were given fake medical certificates showing that they were healthy. A number of people told the BBC that after speaking out about alleged abuse and posting videos on YouTube about their experiences, they were shot at. Damn! Let me find out these zombies were Sodom and Gomorrah gangsters, honey. A BBC crew attempted to capture footage of the church's compound back in March 2022, and they claimed someone at the compound also unloaded the clip in their direction. The ghetto! When the BBC reached out to the church about all of the allegations, their response was, Making unfounded allegations against Prophet TB Joshua is not a new occurrence. None of the allegations was ever substantiated. A month after the investigation was released, Open Democracy website revealed that followers of TB's church had launched counterattacks against his alleged victims. Videos with millions of views described the alleged victims as mentally ill. As of this video, the church's leadership under Evelyn continues to thrive. An unnamed prominent Nigerian told the Daily Maverick website that the allegations might bother Western audiences. However, the allegations against TB had no impact in Nigeria. The reporter added, Many churches here are like sites for free sex anyway. It's just the power, you know, of men over the vulnerability of the female gender. If you want to wear a robe and sing in the choir, you have to sleep with a choir master. Do they read the Bible? Somebody need to go over there and 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 and, and straighten that shit out now. Now, li- what in the hell do they know that's not normal? What the fuck?